Okay, so at this point, you're no doubt quite familiar with the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, and you know what it's all about in terms of performance. I personally looked at multiple versions here on the Harbour Unbox channel, but this new MSI Lightning Z version is by far the biggest, beefiest slot bending monster I've come across yet. Like most behemoths we've come across, this thing will hog three expansion slots, but that is fairly typical, and we did see this with Gigabyte's Aorus Extreme Edition model. However, whereas the Aorus card tipped the scales at 1460 grams, and for that I called it a porker, the Lightning Z takes things to the next level at 1675 grams. That's almost 1.7 kilos. So needless to say, it's an incredibly big, heavy graphics card. In terms of dimensions, the thing measures 320mm long, 140mm tall, and 61mm thick. Before getting to the benchmarks, let's quickly tear down the card and take a look at the design. Also, please note for this video, I'm going to be focusing most of my attention on the thermal performance and overclocking since these are the two main points of interest for me with this graphics card, and I assume it's probably the same for most of you as well. Right, so off with the backplate first. I have to say the backplate on the Lightning Z actually looks very impressive. I like the cutout vents, the Lightning branding with the RGB backlighting, and the copper heat pipe poking through those few vents. Once off, we can see the backside of the plate, and it does in fact feature a flat copper heat pipe running from end to end. Towards the middle of the pipe, a bit off centre, we find a thermal pad. Actually, a pair of thermal pads, though just one of them is on the heat pipe. These thermal pads are located over the backside of the GPU, so they're intended to extract any built-up heat on the backside of the PCB that leaks through from the GPU. The copper heat pipe then disperses this heat across the back plate so it doesn't get built up. It's an interesting design and I'm keen to try and run the card with and without the back plate to see what kind of difference it does make. Next the massive heatsink comes off and this section of the card accounts for 991 grams of the card's total weight. Here we find a large nickel plated copper base which comes in direct contact with half a dozen nickel plated copper heat pipes. In total there are two 8mm pipes and four 6mm pipes. MSI calls this their super pipe design. Basically, these heat pipes are used to maximize heat extraction from the base and spread it through the massive array of fins. Cooling those fins are three Torx 2.0 fans. Uh, the outer two fans measure 100 millimeters in diameter, while the center fan is slightly smaller at 85 millimeters. The fans feature a unique blade design and double ball bearings. Finally, the last line of cooling armor is a thick base plate, which directly cools the memory and MOSFETs. There are also some unique looking fin designs on the base plate, or the, the heat spreader if you will, and again these are designed to maximise uh, the cooling performance by increasing the surface area, and we even find another heat pipe here. Now we've worked our way to the PCB where we find a few interesting things. The highlight here is the power delivery design which sees 14 phases for the GPU and 3 phases for the GDDR5X memory. There's also an insane trio of 8 pin PCIe power connectors, each capable of delivering up to 150 watts of power input. Allowing overclockers to carefully monitor the card's vitals are a series of temperature probes covering things such as the GPU, memory and VRM. These probes can be monitored using MSI's Afterburner utility. Overclocking is obviously what the card's all about, and included is an Allen 2 mode switch, making this the perfect GTX 1080 Ti for breaking world records, MSI says. The LN2 mode apparently lets overclockers remove things such as power, current, and thermal limits, and this essentially means they don't need to go and hard modify the cards for themselves. This is a feature MSI talked quite a bit about at Computex a few months ago now, but in all honesty it really means nothing for the vast majority of people looking at buying a Lightning Z graphics card. What I want to know is how well does this graphics card overclock without having to flick it over to the Allen 2 mode after heading down to your local convenience store for some liquid nitrogen. Before we get to our custom overclocking though, what kind of overclock has MSI applied from factory? Honestly, they have been extremely conservative here, particularly given nothing else about the card is even remotely conservative. By default, the card runs at a base clock speed of just 1582 MHz. Granted, that's roughly 100 MHz over the NVIDIA default spec. It's nothing we haven't seen before. In fact, Gigabyte went slightly higher with their Extreme Edition hitting 1607 MHz. So out of the box, the GTX 1080T Lightning Z won't be blowing any socks off in terms of FPS performance. That said, I do expect the temperatures to be very low and the operating volume to be even lower. So let's go take a look. 
The first thing I wanted to do before messing around with settings in MSI's Afterburner utility was to see how hot the card ran in its stock out of the box configuration. So to do just that I fired up the demanding and still incredibly good looking Crisis 3. Of course with the Lightning Z version of the GTX 1080 Ti at our disposal I didn't mess around. The resolution was cranked up to 4K and the quality preset was maxed out. This allowed for a minimum of 49 FPS with an average of almost 60 FPS so not bad given the quality settings. What I was keeping an eye on here was the GPU temperature, and impressively it never rose above 65 degrees. We hit this temperature at a fan speed of 1250 RPM, which I would describe as silent, especially once the card is inside a PC case. After another hour of gameplay, the RPM did eventually hit 1300 RPM, which it didn't make any noticeable difference to the operating volume. This is an impressive result, especially given the Aorus GTX 1080 Ti, which did hit the same temperature, but it did so with its fan spinning at 2250 RPM, while Palette's equally large Super Jetstream was only a degree cooler at a much more audible 2200 RPM. Stock though, the Palette card was much quieter, though here it did target 74 degrees. So when it comes to operating temperatures, the MSI Lightning Z is without question one of the best GTX 1080 Ti's on the market, though that's hardly a surprise given its size. Expect other high-end models such as the ASUS Strix or MSI's own Gaming X for example to run quite a few degrees warmer. One thing all aftermarket cards have in common though is their ability to run significantly cooler than Nvidia's own Founders Edition model which targets 84 degrees. Right, so the next step was to do a little tinkering and see just how fast we can make the Lightning Z. For this I unlocked the core voltage option in the MSI Afterburner software, cranked it up to plus 100 and then maxed out the power and temp sliders as well. This allowed for a base clock of 1651MHz which saw a GPU boost 3.0 frequency of over 2GHz at all times. The GDDR5X memory also accepted a frequency of 6158MHz resulting in a throughput of 12.3 gigabits per second. Jumping back into Crisis 3, the core clock speed sat for the most part at 2025 MHz, which sadly isn't quite as high as the 2050 MHz the Aorus Extreme Gaming managed. That said, the card did still only hit 65 degrees, occasionally peaking at 66 degrees for a second or so before returning to 65 degrees. I played around with the fan speed profile and found you could still maintain virtual silence with the card overclocked and running at around 55 degrees. Then with the fan speed maxed out, for those of you who play with headphones for example, the card hit just 47 degrees and frame rates were now much closer to 60 FPS for the most part and the card seemed to hold an operating frequency now of 2050MHz in Crisis 3. I also gave Battlefield 1 a shot for a few rounds and never saw the GPU temp exceed 45 degrees, again the fan speed was still at 100% and I wouldn't say the fan was ridiculously loud either at that speed. I should also note that the VRM temps were also very low, of course we are running the fan at full speed, but still the temps maxed out at just 56 degrees. Overclocked using the default fan profile, the VRM did touch on 80 degrees at times, but even then that's very manageable and well within safe operating parameters. Much the same was seen when testing with Dirt 4, the GPU maxed out at just 45 degrees. This time the VRM temp only just exceeded 50 degrees, so overall things were running very cool indeed. Before wrapping up the temperature testing I whipped out the digital thermometer to see how hot things got behind the GPU, uh, that is the back side of the PCB, uh, with and without the back plate installed. For this test I left the overclock in place but went back to the auto fan speed profile, so this meant the GPU was running at 65 degrees. Without the back plate installed, the PCB behind the GPU measured in at 59 degrees after about 20 minutes of game playing Crisis 3. And this seemed about right given the GPU was running at 65 degrees with that massive heatsink on top of it. Now with the backplate installed the digital thermometer was now reporting a maximum temperature of just 48 degrees, again after 20 minutes of Crisis 3. That's a massive 11 degree reduction in temperature and I have to admit I wasn't expecting to see improvements anything like that. Unfortunately I did run out of time and wasn't able to conduct further testing, MSI really put me under the pump with this one, uh, the turnaround time was quite brutal. So I am very keen to see what others find. Wrapping up the testing, let's take a look at a few graphs. Although I've already shown some gameplay footage and performance, here is a look at how the MSI GTX 1080 Ti Lightning Z compares to the Aorus and Founder Edition models in Battlefield 1 at 4K. Disappointingly in this title, the Lightning Z was a frame or two slower than the Extreme Edition, and that's both stock and with our custom overclock. 
The Lightning Z pretty much matches the extreme gaming in Far Cry Primal, so pretty typical performance then for an overclocked GTX 1080 Ti. Finally, we find much the same when testing with For Honor. Again, the 4K resolution was used, but there's not really much else to say here, so let's move on. As you're no doubt aware by this point, the Lightning Z is a real slab of a graphics card, but unlike, say, Palette Super Jetstream, it does have some flair about it. Front on the graphics card looks very nice, the backplate looks great as I've already said, and I have to admit I love the RGB lighting on this thing. I'm generally not a huge fan of RGB lighting, I can appreciate it when it's done well, and I have to admit it looks very awesome on the Lightning Z. Take G-Skill's RGB memory for example, that stuff looks great, and when complemented with the Lightning Z, which gives a similar effect, you have an amazing looking combo. By default you do get an RGB rainbow effect, which is very... Uh, fancy. <laughs> However, using the Mystic Light software, you can really transform the card's look and have it match your build. There are heaps of cool effects to choose from, and you can also adjust the speed and brightness as well. There's also seven lighting zones that can be customized, and overall, the software seems to work very well. It is a bit annoying though that the software must be loaded each time on startup for the color profile to be loaded. Okay, so it's time to wrap things up. What do I think of the MSI GTX 1080 Ti Lightning Z? It's a well-built graphics card. Design-wise, I see no flaws, and the build quality is excellent. Having said that, though, weight might be a concern. I certainly wouldn't recommend transporting a PC with this thing installed. Sitting at my desk, I didn't see any signs that it would damage a PCI uh, Express slot when mounted horizontally, but a decent bump like if you're driving over a pothole with this thing in your boot of your car, that could be a real issue. That aside though, the card looks amazing, runs very cool, and performs as well as any air-cooled GTX 1080 Ti is going to. And from what I can tell, the backplate is more than just a fancy sheet of aluminium with a cool-looking RGB light strip. The only problem with these extreme GTX 1080 Ti's is that they don't really overclock any better than a base model card, at least when using the stock air cooler, or even a liquid cooler for that matter. The Lightning Z is, however, able to run very cool when overclocked, so that's something. In short, do I like the Lightning Z? Absolutely. Is it one of the best GTX 1080 Ti's I've seen to date? 100%. Would I own it? Well, that all depends on who's paying for it now, doesn't it? The GTX 1080 Ti has an MSRP of $700 US, and you can purchase certain models for that price right now. The more serious cards, such as MSI's Gaming or Gigabyte's Aorus Extreme Edition, cost a bit more at $780 US. Then we have the EVGA Hybrid Gaming and the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme Water Force, uh, the all-in-one liquid-cooled models, and they sell for a little over $800. The MSI Lightning Z, though, well, that thing's going to make your eyes water, as it currently comes at an asking price of $870 US. Here in Australia, you can pick up a GTX 1080 Ti for a, an asking price of about $1,000, $1,100 Aussie. Uh, the Aorus GTX 1080 Ti Extreme, for example, that costs $1,250 Aussie, which in my opinion, is getting a little bit pricey. Though sitting next to the Lightning Z, it's a veritable bargain. Down under the MSI Monster starts at $1,500. And I'm not sure what else to add to that, really. So on that note, I'm going to end this review by saying the MSI GTX 1080 Ti Lightning Z is a superb graphics card with an absurd asking price. If you like this review, please be sure to touch up the like button for us and let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. I'm your host Steve, see you again next time guys.